How confident are you consulting remotely? I was talking with a GP registrar the other day who found phone consultations difficult. She simply couldn't assess and handle patients as well without visual cues. Remote consultation can be challenging, especially if a doctor is used to only seeing patients in person. The key to consulting remotely is adapting your communication skills. In this video, I walk you through the most common mistakes that doctors make during telephone consultations and how to avoid them. If you want to be more confident when consulting over the phone, you don't want to miss this tutorial. Let's dive into the first mistake, failing to establish rapport. When doctors consult over the phone, they may struggle to develop a genuine connection with the patient. This can affect the patient's willingness to open up and share important details about their conditions. Start the conversation by introducing yourself and your role. Greet the patient. It helps to speak with a smile and a friendly tone. Confirm the name and date of birth to ensure that you're speaking to the correct person. Let me give you two examples. The first one, hi, this is Dr. Kwan calling from the surgery. Can I speak with Mr. Smith? Can I confirm your date of birth, please? The second example, hi, this is Dr. Kwan calling from the surgery. May I confirm, is this Mr. Smith speaking? May I confirm your date of birth, please? First impression counts. If you make a good first impression with your tone of voice and have a friendly attitude, then you're off to a good start establishing rapport with your patient. Be mindful there may be other people in the patient's environment or they may be out and about. Consider whether it's safe to discuss confidential information and be mindful of the patient's privacy. Check whether it's a good time to start the consultation. Is it a good time to speak with you? Explain why you're calling and what you'd like to do in the consultation. For example, you might say to the patient, I'm calling you today to discuss your headache. I'd like to ask you some questions to help me understand what's going on and hopefully we can help you today. A second mistake is failing to make a safe assessment. Without being able to physically perform an examination, doctors may take shortcuts and forget to ask key questions about the patient's medical history. This can lead to misdiagnosis or incorrect treatment. It's important to make a safe assessment and consider a range of differentials. Ask red flag questions to exclude serious conditions. Jot down important issues you might need to address so you don't forget them, especially if the patient is talking and mentioning various things. The third mistake is missing cues. Doctors may miss important nonverbal cues such as changes in a patient's breathing or tone of voice, some of which may indicate a worsening of the condition. The other day, I asked a 60-year-old man over the phone about the impact of work on his illness. I heard a long sit before he said it was fine. The sick turned out to be a cue. Had I not picked up the nonverbal cue, I would not have learned about the stress he experienced because of pressure from his new boss. To ensure effective communication, active listening is critical. Pay close attention to what patients say and how they say something. Pick up on verbal and nonverbal cues. Mistake number four is using medical jargon. It's important for doctors to communicate clearly and concisely over the phone, but sometimes doctors may use medical jargons or complicated terms such as FBC, TFT, and PSA. Patients may get confused since they don't understand these medical terms. The choice of language is critical. Use a patient's own words in your explanation. This will help them understand what you wish to convey. Avoid using jargon where possible. Chunk and check to ensure your advice is understood easily. We could do some blood tests to check whether there's any causes of this heavy bleeding. That would involve checking your hormone level. We could check whether you don't have any anemia. Mistake number five is not taking into account the patient's circumstances. When consulting over the phone, doctors may not fully understand the patient's personal circumstances, such as their living situation or support network. It's important to consider these factors when making treatment recommendations or providing medical advice. For example, an elderly man with chest pain may refuse admission to hospital because he's worried of leaving his cat alone. By considering the patient's unique circumstance, a doctor is able to tailor the management plan of the patient. For example, suggesting whether a neighbor could take care of the cat while the patient is in hospital or a charity. 